course, we always need to be standing up for the biblical worldview, but how we do it is incredibly important. And I, I see this sort of love for conflict-ridden vitriol in uh, both in and outside of the church. And I and when we bring up passages in Scripture like "as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men," or "Blessed are the peacemakers." Uh, for they shall be called the sons of God. It's sort of like people go, yeah, 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 sure. That's like your mama telling you to be nice, but we don't really have to live like that, right? When, in fact, I, I would say that that's the essence, that shalom is the es- one, of the, one of the core um, aspects of the Christian life. That should be our steady state. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Calvary Conversations. I'll be your host, Dr. Joshua Paxton, director of the Burnham Center for Global Engagement. And I am joined by Sean LePage, uh, department chair of the Ministry Studies Department, uh, Dr. Dodds, director of CU Press, and Tim Hange, uh, our English department chair. We want to talk about having a biblically balanced perspective and Balanced might not even be the actual right word that that we want to have in that in that piece. Um, but it, here's the thing: we are all passionate about something. So I am passionate about missions. Um, you know, Mister Mister LePage is passionate about discipleship and church planting uh, and those kind of things. Tim is passionate about uh, English and writing, and I'm probably forgetting some things. We're we're all passionate about something, right, guys? And so usually the things that we are passionate about are the result of experiences we have had. You know, things we've been taught, teachers we've had along the way, the way we were raised, uh, cultural influences, disciplers, churches we attended, a whole host of things. However, sometimes even things that are good and that we should be passionate about can get out of balance. Or, or we can also, because we're passionate about one thing, we can also downplay the biblical significance of other things because we weren't taught about them, we didn't have those experiences, or they're just not important to us. And so the tendency in these areas is to pendulum swing from one extreme to to the other. Either, you know, we we have a, maybe we have an experience, we're on one side of the fence, we have an experience, and then we're all the way over on the other side of the fence because of it. And yet, the biblical perspective often tends to avoid extremes and be rather balanced. So I'm going to open us with a couple of examples, and then I'll, I have some questions for my crew, and we'll see where this conversation goes. But so a couple of examples. Sometimes, and this is this is what got me in trouble. Sometimes we can overemphasize the importance of biblical prophecy and get into a state of being where anything that happens in world events becomes a sign of Jesus's return. And so we start looking at, you know, the war in Ukraine or, you know, (laughs) other events, et cetera, and we start pointing, oh, this is a sign, Jesus is coming back next week. Um, Or, you know, the other side of that is that we might de-emphasize prophecy so much that it it loses its importance to us and we you know we neglect the significance that it actually has in our lives what it is there to teach us and guide us and and how important it is that we know it which you know neglecting it can also open us up to other problems i like to tell my students have a position because if you don't have a position anybody who comes along has the possibility of swaying you and so another example Another example, and this debate has been going on for a number of years, and yet it's still out there, especially when it relates to missions. And some would define missions as just the gospel. Just give them the gospel. That's what really matters. Others would define missions as we need to meet people's felt needs. Uh, And I have even seen you know, extremes of of where somebody will hold the gospel hostage 
to to meeting someone's needs like they're they will for example they they won't give somebody food or water or whatever it is they need until they've sat through a gospel presentation and that has its own unique brand of of problems so our big question for the for today is how do we biblically find balance in avoiding extreme positions and so my my first question to help us unpack that is what are guys what are some other examples uh, other than the two that i have mentioned what are some other examples where you have seen this this tendency to pendulum swing in our positions played out well as a as a dispensationalist you know you just need to stay away from the prophecy just don't pick on that at all uh, that's that's out of bounds, but um, but I, I you know uh, the example Sean that is demonstrating <laughs> an extreme position. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Uh, but um, I the example that comes to my mind is um, individual faith versus uh, uh, community, the, the 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 community of God, the the church, and uh, very often in our culture, and I think the pendulum has swung way over to the individual faith side of things. Um, and and to the neglect of the community that we're supposed to be a part of the the people of God, the body of Christ. and um, and and that just comes with all kinds of problems to to overemphasize uh, the the individualistic faith um, when there is equally a, a, as much um, and and in fact, you can't really even, uh, walk with Christ as an individual unless you are a part of his people as well. So that's that's the example that comes to my mind. We, we, we're, we're currently in a climate where I think people talk about politics. <laughs> and I'm talking about Christians talking about politics and, and the, the engagement or the lack of engagement with our culture in that area. Boy, we sure can see people go to extremes. I'm tempted to go there in some discussions or tend to shut my mouth when I maybe should say something. Boy, but they, then you get it into uh, discussions of marriage and singleness and uh, evangelism versus discipleship. And I've seen that as a pastor, you know, preaching, you know, pastor, you aren't giving the gospel enough. Pastor, you aren't telling me how to live enough. <laughs> OK, there's a lot of them out there. Probably the thing that bothers me the most is um, an extreme form of communication that focuses on conflict for the sake of attention. Uh, mm -hmm. We it's it's driven by we see it institutionally in 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 the news media, and of course it's a very popular way to uh, gain likes and 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 views in, on social media. But uh, it, it's it's highly concerning because uh, as as Christians, I, I mean, there are times when we we need we do need to stand up. Of course, we always need to be standing up for the biblical worldview. But how we do it is incredibly important. And I, I see this sort of love for conflict ridden vitriol in uh, both in and outside of the church. And I and when we bring up passages in scripture like as much as lies within you live peaceably with all men or blessed are the peacemakers uh, for they shall be called the sons of God. It's sort of like people go, yeah, 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 sure. That's like your mama telling you to be nice, but we don't really have to live like that. Right. When, in fact, I, I would say that that's the essence that Shalom is the S one of the one of the core um, aspects of the Christian life. That should be our steady state, um, and and within wisdom there are times uh, for higher intensity, but our steady. So I, that's that's uh, that's one thing that's concerning me. And I'm going to now throw this. I, I, maybe I'm throwing you a softball. I don't know if you, you had planned on going here with the questioning, but I'm going to say this too: that I think one of the main reasons why people love to uh, um, spout vitriol uh, with. Uh, uh, with a lot of intensity, uh, they use the intensity of their extreme. Uh, they use ex extreme intensity as a substitute for thinking. Or as a um, as a substitute for what, Tim? For thinking. Mm 
Oh, what, okay. I, th I think people tend to gravitate toward extreme positions because you don't have to think at those extremes. You just join a tribe and spout whatever they say. Right? Gotcha. Could we, could, we define, could we define extreme? I, I wonder if our, our listeners that are watching this here are, are just oh, what, yeah, what we're like, saying here. I mean, because so, you know, what Tim's just saying is so true. I, you know, you come away from some conversation, oh, I don't want to see you extreme. And so then we walk away and we go, oh, is I just being in, to, intolerant or tolerant? And you know, using maybe a different word. So when is extreme a yeah, problem? Thank you. thank you for that, Mike, and, and reminding me of that. We actually had that. I mean, we, we had that conversation a little bit before we started recording here. But in saying... So in saying extreme, we don't necessarily mean you've left an orthodox biblical position. Okay. We we in using the word extreme, we don't mean that your your theology has now left proper biblical theology. Okay. You swayed so far one direction that you're now no longer biblical in your approach. That um, would definitely be extreme though. That, that, that would, would definitely be, be extreme. extremely extreme. Yeah, that would definitely be extreme. But we're, your... we're we're trying to keep it within the for our conversation here. We're trying to keep it within the realm of um, you know both of these might be biblical. Both of these might be biblically accurate, but our our tendency might be to really focus heavy on one side, and sometimes in doing that we can exclude the the other side. Like we can exclude we can exclude the other. So let me let me use my um, let me let me use my my missions exam uh, as an illustration, as an example, um, example, as an example. And so so in missions. All right. Do do we need to proclaim the gospel? And now I have to define that. But when I say gospel, I'm referring to first Corinthians 15, one through five, the death burial resurrection appearance by many wit uh, seen by many witnesses of christ that's how i'm defining the gospel okay that obviously needs to happen right at the same time how do you proclaim the gospel to somebody who might be literally starving and so at that point in time and Mike brought this Mike brought this illustration up earlier in our conversation uh, before we started hitting record. At that point in time, yes, this person needs the gospel, but they also need food. They need food. They need water. They how are they going to actually have the attention span to listen to what you have to say when they're near fainting from, you know, from starving? And so the the tendency, though, might be to emphasize one so much that we neglect the other side. And so we'll emphasize proclaiming the gospel and we might neglect meeting somebody's felt need. And so then the gospel doesn't even make sense to them because it hasn't been demonstrated. Or we'll meet the felt need and in the meeting of the felt need, we completely leave out the proclamation of the gospel, which is arguably more significant since that addresses their eternal destiny, not just them, their temporal felt need. And so balance is needed. It's, it's not an either or, it's a both and. Both of these things are important. So have, have I defined that for you, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Just, just, I was wondering if our audience would be wondering yeah. where we're going at. So thanks for bringing us back into the, the, the yeah. two rails. Yeah. So yeah. So those are that's that's kind of yeah. You think that's a good way of thinking it. You think about a train that's going down a track, right? Both of, we need both of those rails in order to get down get down the track. Just one of them isn't going to get us there. So so let me let me ask my next question. So maybe reflecting on that illustration, how do we recognize when we might be straying out of balance? on a particular view or position? You know, I um, <clears throat> I like what Tim said about shalom. You know, the way I understand shalom or peace uh, in, the, in the, the biblical term shalom is, is more like a harmony, a harmonization with yourself and the people around you and, and the world around you. And uh, that, that for me is a, is a, a a much more uh, practical uh, idea than balance because balance is 
it kind of implies two things, like the two rails of the railroad track that you just mentioned. There but actually, more than two. Actually, we have to harmonize a lot of things, yeah. don't we? Even if, just talking about theology, and so even if we just took this like from the, the perspective of a teacher, um, you know, I, I've got multiple subjects, <laughs> you know, that need to be taught that 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 people need to understand, um, and so uh, I'm not just talking here, like your example of prophecy. Uh, versus uh, the Great Commission, I got a lot more things, you know, that that I yes. need to harmonize in that, and and so uh, some of those things are are going to naturally be more primary in their nature, uh, such as the Great Commission, um, uh, and others are going to be less primary, and 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 I I also have to consider the people to whom I'm talking. Yeah, as you use the illustration of 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 a a starving person, um, you know, uh, I, I have to take into consideration uh, those immediate needs and, and um, you know, so, the so they're just the audience. context and all kinds of things that we have to harmonize. And I think that that's a, that's a difficult thing to do, uh, especially, uh, as you say, when we have a, a passion for something or, or even spiritual gifting for something, uh, perhaps our training and our background comes into play there. And so we we just have to we have to figure out how to harmonize things. And sometimes that means emphasizing one thing over another thing and that and the next day maybe we're emphasizing that other thing, you know, and de-emphasizing something else. But I, I, I personally like the idea of harmonizing um, uh, I guess better than uh, than um, balancing. Like I think about you know work versus family. Well, I've also got, uh, you know, um, I, I've got my extended family. I've got uh, friends. I've got my church. I've, you know, I, I, I got more than just work and family. That would be super easy yeah. almost to balance those two. But I've got, I've got more than that to balance. So it's, it's, it's really harmonizing the multiple things that we have to do and 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 to uh, to cover and to and to uh, wrestle with in life. I'll throw out this. Okay, how do you tell when you when you are to, to address your question specifically? How do you tell when you are out of balance? If your position causes you to say things that, if you thought about it for five minutes, were anti-scriptural, like I'm going to give you an example of this. Uh, I was having relation building relationships with some of my coworkers at a at a, a place I worked once, and. Uh, taking opportunity as, as the opportunity arise to talk to them about my faith. Um, I had a coworker, a Christian coworker, the only one I knew of actually at this office approached me and say, what do, you, what do you think you're doing? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, why are you sharing, you know, why are you sharing your, your, you know, your, your faith with these people? He was a hyper Calvinist who believed that got, uh, witnessing was useless. Right. Right. I, I mean, I, 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 I really could not believe this out, out of a, actually out of an information technology worker. Like, do you hear yourself for a moment uh, saying things that are incredibly counter to things like the Great Commission? I mean, oh, so, so much of the New Testament, because the lens of Calvinism is so important to you and your, your hyper interpretation of that um, is so important to you that 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 it's caused you to go to this extreme, okay? Mm, so, and right. then I'll say something else about about uh, about extremism too. There are times, Sean, that I would agree with you that you have to pull two things into balance, and that that's the solution. And Josh, your example was an incarnational gospel, right? That mm -hmm. meets people's needs, and a proclamational gospel that that tells people the good news, right? So uh, we see Christ himself balancing that through healing and through his preaching, right? So that is a place where you walk a balanced line. But there are some, like, uh, there are some times when we, we, when, when the extremes are actually, we should balance neither of what we perceive at the extremes. On one hand, you would have arrogant certitude, pride, you know, on the other hand, you have sort of self-demeaning um, humility, 
that's not really healthy humility at all. Should we tell people to balance those two positions? No. There's a no. third and better way, which is humble confidence, right? That's completely different from arrogant cert certitude and completely different from uh, uh, self-demeaning uh, humility. I point that out because I, I think that's that's super important for us to understand that there are there are different things that we can call into extremes. Sometimes the extremes are between two things that, if balanced, would be healthy. Sometimes we need to throw out the extremes and find a third and better way mm -hmm. because neither neither extreme represents something that should be in balance. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, Tim, let me. I I, I want to be clear about what you're. You're saying so. Um, I mean, what when you say um, what were the examples you gave of uh, arrogant of, certitude on one time on one hand? OK, and, and then, sort of a sniveling, uh, uh, self demeaning. Uh, so the oh, woe is me. I'm lower I, than I'm there's absolutely nobody on the other nobody hand, right? You know, me. sort of a lack of uh, self esteem yeah, almost on the other hand, right? It, Neither it, of those a is false, a good position. So a false. But in essence, it's still pride. That's true. Um, a, a false humility or self hatred, something like that. Self loathing on one side, arrogant certitude on yeah. the other. Let's let's so, let's look at those two extremes. So when you say that, I, I mean you're you're talking about things that are unbiblical, really. I mean those Correct. those are not in harmony with scripture, and and uh, you know so, um, you know the the solution or the the thing that we should the things that we should emphasize will never be. Unbiblical. I mean, I mean, uh, we we may emphasize unbiblical things, but but that would you know that I don't think that's what we're uh, really uh, wrestling with here. I think we are wrestling with things that are biblical, such as uh, such as the gospel and 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 good works. You know, those are both very biblical. Um, but I, I do think that that really you're what you're saying is is the answer, and that is that we need to be as biblical as possible. You know, um, and 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 I think that uh, biblical it, it in, includes, you know, uh, the the um, the instructions or the or the wisdom that we need to to uh, to bring those two things together. You know, so so we have the the gospel and the and and the good works, and and those are not polar opposites, uh, biblically speaking. Those are those go hand in hand, hand in glove. You know. And and even as we give uh, a meal to the starving person, you know we can be sharing with them that uh, this is a this is a gift to you, like like the gift of Jesus, you know, uh, and the gift of salvation. So, so I, I think you know when we're uh, when we're talking about um, unbiblical things, we we never want to emphasize those, but but uh, I think the. But Sean, the reason I bring that up is because sometimes it's difficult to distinguish the unbiblical from the biblical. Here's what I mean. I, I don't Here. disagree with that. I'm simply yeah. saying that that is the, really the answer is we need to be as biblical as possible. I, gotcha. I mean, that, that, that brings everything together in a harmony that, that, that uh, will, will be pleasing and honoring to God. So, mm -hmm. so since we've since we've gone there, and we only have about three minutes left, my my last question, which Sean has already answered, um, what can we do to come back to a more balanced viewpoint and more balanced perspective? And I I believe Sean has already answered that in that we need to we we need to be striving to be I'm gonna use this word radically biblical that that we're allowing we're allowing scripture to speak to all areas of our life and and, and i might even add that there's also a component here a component that i i will acknowledge um i received this past week and it was very good for me to receive that which is you know having accountability and and having other individuals in your life who are going to challenge your potentially extreme perspectives and and help you challenge you to you know main, maintain a more biblical viewpoint when we can get you know when we can stray off a little bit so josh i i, I want to follow up i know i'm doing all, doing all the talking here but i i i, I do want to follow up <laughs> You're fine. um you know, because that quiet one. 
Yes, go next. <laughs> um, you know, when, when I say biblical, and I think when when we say when somebody says biblical, it gives us this picture of I know the text, and I you know I know the truth, you know. But really, biblical is knowing the truth um, in in community, as you as you indicate there. Uh, it, it's it's being uh, accountable to the body of Christ. It's it's interacting with other believers to make sure that we're not getting out of whack and out of balance. It, it's it's more than just knowing the text, and that's that's what I wanted to highlight. Um, when because sure. I think that I think we're in in you know we're like minded on that. Is that um, you know uh, biblical uh, means that we're we're living it as, as well as knowing it and. And we, we, we don't want to, you know, communicate a, uh, an extreme position of, you know, I know the Bible and therefore I am. Let biblical. Me, yeah, let me let me let me back that up maybe with an, an example. One one example, and hopefully we don't get a whole lot of emails about this, would be that in our uh, in our our Western cultural framework predisposes us to approach scripture with particular lenses and see particular things and because of that we can we can sometimes um you know we can sometimes come to scripture and we might miss what's actually there because we're viewing it through our cultural lens and so the that highlights even an importance of a a broader biblical community where we're we're conversing with our brothers and sisters in South America and Africa and Asia and et cetera, to where now we're we're having conversations that are on a level of well how how does their cultural perspective, you know, how how might that change so that we can help? Uh, obviously we want to have we want to practice proper biblical hermeneutics here and and read the text for what it says. That's an obvious. Um but how can the community right help us potentially check and balance our our you know potential cultural blinders if i could put it that way so um mike i want to ask you if you have anything to say yeah one thing i said when we were offline at the beginning is it is it ever appropriate for us to be biblically unbalanced and i'd come back and say yes but meaning there there if 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 God has called us, for example, to a ministry of evangelism, we're going to see that grid, and we better pursue that grid. But others will look at our life and say, wait a minute, you're imbalanced. You aren't discipling people. But you know, God's really burdened my heart for all right. So I, I think we need to throw that in, too. Uh, so I, I was asking myself, as I saw your question offline, and and then, then we got into the discussion, and, and I just want to throw out that I think uh, we need to be careful when we force our priorities, if I could use that word, mm. uh, toward other people. And That's and I think what you're saying, we get into extremism when we're saying, you have to do what I do. Well, that, that's just as wrong, too. It's another part of the discussion, but uh, I need to follow God's calling for my life. And when I get out of balance, I'm probably not following that calling. And so there's a uniqueness there that I think we also have to think about in our, our discussion of uh, when when are we extreme and and why and uh, when is it appropriate to be an extreme person? And that's a measure that, Sean, you're just talking about community. And there's that affirmation, that's that encouragement that we all need for, for others too. Um, you know, I, I think of when I need to, to stop things, I, I usually don't know it, that I've gotten extreme. I mean, I'm imbalanced or I don't have my priorities right. And and so somebody else has to come in. It's like going to fly. Uh, it, we have a concept in flying called dead reckoning. And it sometimes happens just the way it sounds. <laughs> it doesn't end up well. But but it's you, you set a course, a degree on the on the count on the uh, compass that you're going to follow for a certain amount of time. And hopefully when you break out of the clouds, you're at your destination. Well, if you're one degree off. You were supposed to go 360 degrees on your compass, but you went 359. In just 60 miles, you'll be one one mile off of course. So yeah. there are times that people have to come into my life because I just don't see that I've drifted because I've not held to the compass. Um, so I, that was another part. That's good. We need a community. That's great, Mike. 
Oh my goodness, do I get a final word here? Wow. Hey, yes, yes. <laughs> I guess so. No, no promises. Right. No promises. I, I, I think I'm answering your question. I, I think your question was along the lines of how do we, you know, how what are practical ways that we can stay in balance? Yeah. And so I, I would say this, that one way, and this is not always the case, uh, but one way is to accept the tension that exists on issues in Scripture. Okay? Mm, good. Um, because, uh, again, our tendency is to want matters resolved. Yes. So we'll read verses and we'll say, you know what? I'm a predestination guy. And another person will read verses and say, uh, no, you know what? I'm a, I'm a free will guy. It's free will, not predestination. So, right. Our, our, uh, so there is this, uh, or you could say that scripture, you know, is, presents a, a, uh, an incoherent view here, or you can accept that there is a lot about these issues that interplay and that are <laughs> tied into the fabric of reality in a way that we don't fully understand. My personal view is that both free will and predestination coexist. Uh, I, I think scripture supports that. I think, um, but this is, this is like, this is where we have to understand that it's, it, it is okay to live with tension in scripture. And I can, I can, you know, I could spell out a few more here, but we'll, we'll leave it at that one. It's a very famous one. One I, I actually watched a church split over when I was, I uh, was in the service when, when, yeah. when uh, uh, half the church got up and walked out after an argument with the pastor over free will uh, and, and, uh, and, and predestination. I've seen churches split. Oh, I've seen a church split over this issue. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why it comes to mind was that was part of my, my journey and my search there and my, that had a high degree of impact on me. And uh, just in saying, you know, we have to be honest when the scriptures speak and it's clear, we have to be honest. And, and a lot of times that's uncomfortable because when scripture is very clear, sometimes it puts us against culture that, you know, and we have to be honest about that. But where scripture speaks and we don't have the full picture or where it doesn't speak and we're doing a lot of inference, we need to be honest about that too as believers and be willing to live with attention. So good. Good. Yeah, that's I like good, that. Tim. And uh oh, this, this Sean's gonna. Uh, that's all we have time for. <laughs> I was just giving Tim a thumbs up. I think that's 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 really good, and that's basically what I was trying to get at by talking about being biblical. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. it's sure. uh, it's uh, what what you were talking about there. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. So, so that's that's all we have time for. Um, Guys, we hope this this conversation was beneficial to you today. Uh, let us know. We want to interact with you. Let us know if there are things that uh, you know that you're struggling with that this conversation sparked, and maybe you need help, or we can speak into those for you. But uh, this is Calvary Conversations. That's all we have for today. Uh, God bless everyone. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Calvary Conversations, a service of Calvary University in Kansas City, Missouri. We invite you to participate in the conversation by contacting us through the Calvary University website, calvary.edu, or by calling us at 816-322-0110. Join us again next week for another Calvary Conversation.